In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening and welcome to our Bible Sunday evening reflection. Let us pray. Lord, speak to us that we might hear your word. Move among us that we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers that we may learn to trust you. Amen. And the Collect for Bible Sunday. Blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear writ them read, mark and learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life which thou hast given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our reading for this evening is from Matthew chapter 24, verses 30 to 35. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the door. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment that Jesus told his first disciples and followers. It was a challenge for them, and continues to be that for us today. It is saying that we need to place God as number one in our heart the seat of our emotions, our soul, the deepest part of us, and our mind, our intellect, our thinking, our understanding. This evening, being Bible Sunday, perhaps we could think about our scriptures as having an impact on our whole lives, on our whole selves, not just on our heart, not just on our mind, not just on our souls, but on every single part of us, intertwined. We can read the Bible as we do a newspaper, nice stories, but no impact. We could read them as a piece of ancient literature, studying it with our intellect, as we would any other historical text. But the words not going deep into us. Or we can read the stories of scripture as things to make us happy, a set of spiritual writings taken straight off the page, but not actually making any impact on our minds, not asking any questions of the text. None of these should sit contentedly for us as Christians. So how should we read the Bible so that we satisfy our whole selves, mind, soul and heart? Each passage we read should cause us to ask three questions. What did this passage mean to the original audience? What links are there between the original listeners and us? What does this passage mean to me 
as I read it today. To answer these questions may take a lot of work on our part. We need to set time aside. We need to read. We need to work. We need to be honest and maybe have to be prepared to make changes to our lives based on what we discover. We may need to repair relationships. We may need to apologise. We may need to make life-changing decisions. That is the adventure of reading God's word and applying it to our lives. When we take a passage of scripture, there may be many things which we do not understand. There is so much in the scriptures that we will find difficult. Perhaps words, phrases that disturb us and challenge us, even challenge us to change how we live our lives. Because when we read the Bible, we do not so as impartial observers, but people looking to find out what God was and is saying to his people in the past, the present, and indeed in the future. We are so fortunate that today we have so many resources for studying the scriptures, Bible reading notes, Bible translation courses, study groups, and other methods. If we do neglect studying our Bibles, we are missing out on a huge part of God's blessing. We should all try to do as we prayed in our collect, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest the pages of the Bible so that our relationship with God may grow. Yes, we will be challenged. We may think of questions we have never thought of before but we will be brought so much closer to God, so much closer to the God who loves us, so much closer to the God who wants, through his word, to be closer to us. Let us pray. Loving God, your word is the light we see, a guide for our footsteps to where you are found. Your word is the strength we find when darkness threatens to overwhelm. Your word is the power we need to become servants of a heavenly king. Your word is the reason we live in the pure knowledge you are everything. Amen. To seek and save the lost And exchange the joy of heaven For the anguish of a cross With a prayer you fed the hungry With a word you still the sea Yet how silently you suffered That the guilty may go free You're the author of you're the Lord of every man, and your cry of love rings out across the lands. With a 
shout you rose victorious, wrestling victory from the grave, and descended into heaven, leading captives in your way. Now you stand before the Father, interceding for your own, from each tribe and tongue and nation, you are leading. Leading God, your word, the lamp for our feet, reveals to us the stony ground we often tread upon. Where stumbling in our weakness, we reach out a hand for you to hold, asking simply that you lead us once again to firmer ground, toward that rock upon which our journeying began, where, in safety, we can rest a while. Amen. For giving God, you have called us to be your people, to follow where you lead, be obedient to your word, and bring your good news wherever we might go. Forgive the impatience and lack of faith which causes us to stumble, preferring our ways to yours, relying on human wisdom rather than the truth which comes from you. Draw us back into your arms as prodigals to our Father and grant us patience, perseverance and a childlike faith in our journeying with you. Amen. Faithful God, this world tempts us to believe the wisdom that comes from human minds to have faith in no other things. But we have glimpsed the truth, revealed in Scripture's words, and we shall worship the Lord our God and serve him alone. This world tempts us to believe we have control of our destiny and have no need of the divine. But we have felt the touch of Christ upon our hearts and we shall worship the Lord our God and serve him alone. Amen. We bring these prayers to our Lord Jesus Christ in the words of the prayer that he taught all his disciples to say. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our closing prayer. God of love, the Bible recounts the story of your great love poured out on us. Help us to live out that story of love every day of our lives in everything that we say and do. Amen. Amen.